Yeah. Yeah, we're back. What's up with you? High vibe from me to you. All the people watching. Hope your vibrations is emitting in a great and positive, good manner around this universe we live in. I go by the name of Dane. I would love for y'all to subscribe to your boy, Damien Harkless. So, you know, we can keep this a mutual budding relationship. I got light to give. You got light to give. We all got light to give within our being. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's share it. Let's give it. The topic I'm going to talk about today is more so in the realm of philosophy. And it's a philosophical standpoint. You know what I'm saying? It's a belief that you can apply to life and see how it works out for you. The concept is relativity. What is relativity? I'll give you my personal definition. From my angle, from my outlook, in my time, from my perspective, my relative perspective, I might add ironically, relativity is the dismissal of a standard reality or the unwillingness to accept the norm or what is perceived as the absolute truth. Relativity, what relativity is, relativity states that your experiences shape and create your reality, but that is not definitively everyone's reality. AKA, your perception is your reality. AKA, you don't know shit. <laughs> And I know um, this is discomforting for many, especially when we live in a world of ration where everything we're taught is something essentially that we claim to know. We claim it to be factual. If you go through our education system and if you go through parenting, you go through your parents and you go through the doctor, we go from institution to institution just being told what we're supposed to do, what we should do, things that are an objective reality yet not a reality let me bring that back we live on an objective reality and not a reality a lot of people can't understand that a lot of people can't comprehend the fact that an objective reality is a reality that us humans together create so we can come together and agree upon a perception or have a point of reference for us to talk about and shoot the shits. It's not a reality. If I may give an example of an objective reality, I use the terminology black and I use the terminology white. Today, black implicates every, every person of, every Afrocentric person of color claims to be black. If you have, if you're a descendant of Africa, excuse me, if you have Afrocentric traits, you are perceived black. And what we have, I'm going to show you the relativity right now in just words in itself. We have this notion of black. And before the 60s, before the 50s, move, 60s movement, the civil rights activists, and you have the black nationalists, and you have all these movements from people of color that distinguish the meaning of black into something of power, into something of endearment, into something that we can look upon and have respect for. So and after the 60s movement, we've taken this concept, we've taken this notion of black, and we've applied it in a different way than it's ever been used. Prior to 1960s, how do we see black? Well, in the 1700s, the late 1700s, black was essentially given to Afrocentric people by the legal system of America to essentially implicate us as inferior people. So the term black from 17, I forget which, late 1700s, all the way up until 1960s, it was understood that the meaning of black is an inferior human being. 
still a concept, still a relative concept we create with our ration. We create the notions of black and white, and we subscribe a nation to them. We subscribe a demographic of people to black and white. The first concept we gave it black and white were colors. Now it's transcended to an inferior person being black by definition and just by meaning that we've held. We've held this meaning through law, through legislation, through ideology. We've held this meaning of black. If you were black in 1822, you're implicated as less than a human, three-fifths of a human being. Your rights, you're not entailed the same rights as a white person. This is why <clears throat> there's a concept of white privilege because you have to derive, you have to go to the derivative of the meaning. It was, if you had one-eighth of black in you, you weren't allotted the privileges of a white person. So as I ramble on, I revert back to the concept of relativity. We've changed that notion, essentially. We've changed the meaning. Words are the prime example to this relativity concept because if you notice, it's not the word that dictates what it means. It's who says it, it's how they say it, how they say it, and it's within the environment in which they come from, in which the context of the word is. For example, like I said, with black, black is one. You got the 60s movement and you got the movement, the white nationalist movement, what I call it, the eugenicist movement prior that implicates black as inferior. Another one we want to say, another word we want to use, we can go all day, excuse me. We can go all day when it comes to words. We can go with nigga. Nigga essentially has transcended the same manner that black has just in a different time frame. So you go from nigga, meaning three-fifths of a man, an inferior aspect, less than a human, ignorant, aggressive, thuggish. You have all these concepts and constructs for nigga, and then you have the uh, culture of hip-hop in which use it. And, and prior to the culture of hip-hop, you have you have in the time of the 60s movement as well they're they're using negro they're not calling the fellow negro to inferior inferiorate him they're not saying negro to imply three-fifths of a man it's just the common terminology it changes so much these words this life this experience is so relative to the person to the energy within it <clears throat> that we can't standardize a word we can't standardize a perception another example of this would be like using ambiguous words like tall big strong the best the problem we get in Western society we believe that our way of view is the right way we really perceive our way as the reality I'll give an example of our democracy that we we perceive if you talk to an American an American will always tell you Oh, we live in the best country in the world. There's no better country. From your viewpoint, someone who's probably been in America all their life, who may have made a scarce visit to another country, from your viewpoint, America is the best country. But guess what? We can't standardize the best. The beauty about something being the best or something being good or something being bad, it is all dependent on the soul who's perceiving it. You guys can't tell me what I think is good and what I think is bad. It's all relative. As I revert back to this main concept in which I'm talking about, we're talking about relativity. And I feel with humans today, this is a, a, a fatal problem that we face right now. And I say fatal because we're losing humanity because of it. We live on a plane or we put ourselves on a plane of objective reality to where we create all of these concepts and all of these constructs to live in, we create, remember that part, we create. The whole thing about relativity is these concepts are created to fit within our illusion that we want. We use our imagination or the people who create the concepts, the elite, the aristocracy, the bourgeoisie, <laughs> create the concepts in which we live by. 
our objective reality is the media. That's the plane in which we choose to float on. We all have that common denominator. We all view the media. We all watch the media. We all are susceptible to the ideals that the media presents. So what does that entail? We all have the same favorite rappers. We all, all the, all of our favorite rapper right now is Kendrick Lamar. He's the best rapper. You can't tell nobody that. We all think the best basketball player is LeBron James. You can't tell nobody that. This is why I initially did my videos in the way I did because with this objective reality that we have with the media, all of our opinions are being standardized. AKA, our humans are losing our opinions, our innovativeness, our distinctiveness, what was given to us by whatever energy, whatever higher power you believe in, whatever higher power that be, that individuality is, is being lost due to this standard realm we choose to live on. We perceive democracy and republic, Republicans as the only two options of government. We perceive a Hillary and a Trump as the only two people that we can vote for when they weren't. When the democracy or the when Democrats or Republicans, I don't subscribe to any of those. I don't like any of their ideologies. They don't advocate people that look like me, right? So yeah, you talk about this concept of relativity and you start to see that it is just no more than a concept. It is not a reality that we actually float on. So you get that and you start to understand that from my position, <clears throat> this is, yes, my reality, but this is not the reality. So what does that do for me? It allows me to look at another position and not use my subjective position to overstep my boundaries and tell him he's wrong. Tell him I'm right. In a world of relativity, there is no right. I can't be right. I can only infer, I can only imply what I believe through my perspective. So I can't denigrate his perspective. Like let's say, our, one of our objective realities is the round earth. We all accept that the earth is round. Though nobody's done enough extensive research, personally, to understand or know, and the scientist himself, many scientists, many scientists, excuse me, him or herself, have believed in the flat earth theory. But if you go with our objective reality, what we've been taught, what we've learned our whole life, the earth is round. So if we hear a flat earth claim, guess what we're gonna say? Oh, that guy's an idiot. That guy's retarded. That guy's stupid. When we ourselves do not know, who is the stupid one? <laughs> who is the stupid one? The one who thinks he knows about this world in which he or she can barely even grasp? Much of this world isn't tangible to our physical being and our perception. We can only perceive so much <laughs> to begin to know. So your, per your perception is your reality because you... Your, your perception is limited to a few senses, five senses and the mighty field sense. That's what I call it. When, you, when, you're, when you're in tune with yourself, you, you feel without touching stuff. You know what I'm saying? You, you're more of an empath. You're more of a, you're more of a soul than a cognition. You're not just a mind with, full of concepts. That's, that's another thing that relativity is in itself. When you, when you realize that you in this world of metaphysics, you may be separate from your body. You understand that the experiences in your body may not be an actual reality. Because let's say your spirit leaves and it faces a whole different reality. Our reality could be the star's reality. Their form of absoluteness. A tree's reality. Because these, these, these entities have energies as well. So... Yeah, we touching on 14 minutes. I keep going all day. I can give examples if we want to refer to somebody being tall. We love to standardize every little thing in the world. We standardize tall. We standardize small. We standardize ugly. We standardize aesthetics as far as being pretty. The shape of your fucking thing determines if you're pretty according to our standard. We standardize black. Excuse me again. 
for the environment I live in. They got planes flying over. You know, we live in some sort of urban area. And you know, it's never eco-friendly. You know what I'm saying? Those who understand me, you know how disenfranchised people get treated. But you got tall, you got small. To somebody, a six foot four person is tall. You know what I'm saying? If I grew up in a family full of seven footers, and I grew up in a tribe where all I perceived was seven footers, then guess what? A six foot four person is a small guy. That's another tack on to relativity. I can literally give examples every all day. Let's talk about racism and how we perceive racism from our relative standpoint. Because you let one person tell it that looks like me. You got a person of color for the for the most part. I mean, you got the wheezies and the, and the some people who say they don't see racism, which is fair. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, race, racism, these are all concepts and constructs that we've created as in reality that we choose to live on. But I'm using this to show you the relativity and concept itself. You got a group of people who all, aside from Wheezy and motherfuckers like that, who claim to see racism as a harmful effect on people of color. Through our experiences, through what we've seen in this life, our treatment is different from people who are not of color. Then you have white people through their experience Say, hey, I, I don't see racism in the way you guys do. I don't understand. Why you why are you guys keep pulling the race car? What is this thing? It doesn't exist. It's a fair, even playing field. It's all perspective at that point. From your standpoint, as a white person, you don't see the discriminatory methods that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't see how the legal system implicates laws that create me in a disenfranchised spot, that have put me against a jury that of people that don't look nothing like me. There's no relativity in my jury. So yeah, the, the whole aspect of race and racism in itself, you can see the relativity when people start talking about it. So yeah, it, it's, it's really a concept. I love this concept because as I say, you can choose any... With this concept, you're not holding firm to any concept aside from this one like if you choose to take this one concept now every other one is is speculatory in question because relativity is in itself poses the question of reality you know what i'm saying the concept essentially is another question upon a question upon a question so i would say you're not a firm believer which doesn't create a dissonance I'll do another episode on cognitive dissonance. But once you become a firm believer in something, you strip the relativity of it. Let's say you firmly believe in um, Christianity, right? And hey, shout out, shout out to my strong, firm believers that get to that higher level of consciousness through it. I'm not taking a stab at y'all, but if you believe in Christianity, right, firmly, and you know, you know within your heart, that's the right, right religion then what does that do? When somebody tries to tell you about the Quran, when somebody tries to tell you about Allah from a whole different perspective, let's say from the Middle East, they don't believe in shit about Christianity. They say it's a lie, it's falsely taught. So when you, and, when you and that person meet and you guys engage in a conversation because you're so firm, you don't hold this concept of relativity due to your firmness, you're in an argument. You get a cognitive dissonance. So you hear some information that may sound logical through the Quran or through what this person is telling you but you're refusing to hear it because based on your belief system based on what you were taught Christianity is the right way there is no other right way I know I'm right I know my faith you know what I'm saying you can use relativity and you can cut and slice in so many ways to see how we apply it or how we don't apply it we are becoming robots. We take away our relativity as humans. We are robots. We see it in every channel, in every media outlet. ESPN tells us who's the best at everything. And when we argue someone else, you got the, you got the robots of the world checking us saying, hey, you tripping. 
Jay Z, he's top five. You can't say he's not in the top five. You know how many fucking rappers it is on this planet? You know how many rappers it is I've seen go through on this planet? Rappers who have no notoriety with bars. I don't see Lupe on the, in the press. You know what I'm saying? I don't see Yassine Bay in the press. I don't see Common in the press. I don't see Banks in the press. That's my favorite. One of my favorites. I don't see Andre Three Stacks in the press. So... They're not in our objective reality. We have to float on this objective reality to be normal. Why the fuck? Why the fuck we want to be normal? Let's break that down. Why do you want to be normal? I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to figure out. Cause you hear people say, "Ah, oh, oh, he's weird. He's a weirdo." All weird mean. All weird means to me is someone who doesn't comply to the constructs and doesn't appear to be normal so if you got somebody that may not have a nine to five you got somebody that's not re non-religious you know all of the stuff that's our objective reality everybody here has to be religious in america everybody here has to uh be well versed and well educated through the 12th through k system everybody here has to have a nine to five it's the common standard if i'm without these constructs i'm considered weird so why the fuck you want to be normal what's so good about being like everyone else when you were born as something separate from everyone else yet connected later we'll talk about interconnectivity but you are separate in being in the body you have this one body that you were given that allows you to perceive life and you've traded that in for someone else's perception Remember, when we talk about this objective reality, this is not your perception. This is not you. This is you being transformed into what they want you to be. When you when they got you watching Disney and they tell the girl how to how to how to be and they tell the man how to be through Disney channels, through TV representation, they uh women are subscribed to certain gender roles. Men are subscribed to certain gender roles. I know niggas today who think pink is gay. Who think wearing an article of clothing is clothing is gay. From their subjective ass standpoint. But they don't understand it. It's been an objective reality to say blue is for men. Pink is for women. Stop being robots, man. Be yourself. Understand why you don't like pink. Maybe if you understand that somebody taught you that. And it's solely out of ignorance. That you think a man shouldn't wear pink. That it means that you like fucking and sucking other men. <laughs> it's an act of total ignorance. You think rompers, somebody wears a romper, he automatically likes dick. Doesn't it sound ignorant when you hear it? I, don't let the dissonance kick in because you hear me and you're like, oh, come on, Dame, come on, Dame, that's, that's gay. Don't, don't, don't. Hey, is it gay to wear an article of clothing? So who's making sense right here? This is relativity. This is the concept I love. This is the concept I want to spread and share to the many people out there who have been standardized. We've all been standardized in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Let's not deny it. The person who says that their objective is the person to look out for. That they're the most. I know I'm subjective. I know my experience dictates my subjectivity and my perception. So... Yeah, man, this is Relativity. This is your boy, Dane. We touching on 24 minutes. I can go forever about the concept of relativity.